Welcome to your video on exponential growth and decay. This will be part one, where we are focusing on the rate being given as a percent. We're going to start by looking at the equation for an exponential model. Every equation that we're going to be looking at for the next couple of days is going to be of this form, y equals a b to the x. It's important to note that the exponent x only pertains to, to the b. So in other words, b is the base. So let's look at the different variables in this equation and talk about what they mean. Starting with the y. y is going to represent the final amount. So in other words, when you plug things into the c equation, y will give you what you're looking for. a will be the starting amount. Sometimes that's called the initial amount, the original amount. It could be an original population or um, just a given number at the beginning of time. Part, or letter B is the multiplier. The multiplier is going to be the trickiest part of our work today, and we'll talk more about what that means in just a second. The multiplier can represent two things. It can represent growth or decay. If it is growth, you will calculate B by doing 1 plus R. Now you may ask, where is this R coming from? And if you look off to the side here, R is the rate. And the rate will be given to you in the problem as a percentage. We know that when we're given a percent, we have to convert that percentage to a decimal. So I've provided a couple of examples for you. If the rate is 2%, then you would convert R to be 0 0.02. In other words, you're just moving the decimal place over two spots. The second example is really important. A lot of times students see a decimal in the percentage and they think that it's already in decimal form, but you still need to move that decimal place over two spots. So just check out the two percentages and then look at the corresponding R value and make sure that you understand how to get from one to the other. So back to our multiplier. Again, if you're looking at growth, meaning you have a quantity that is getting bigger with time, you're going to calculate that B value by doing 1 plus R. If you have decay, a situation where something is decreasing or declining over time, you're going to calculate B by doing 1 minus R. The last variable, x, just represents the time. And that time will be given to you in the problem. Sometimes it's days, sometimes it's hours, and sometimes it's years. So you basically have to look at the context of the problem. This equation corresponds to a graph. We've just finished up looking at graphs of exponential functions, and there are two types. There is growth and there is decay. So first I'd like you to just examine the growth graph. The equation is the same as the one we just talked about. And what I want you to notice is that you will know you have growth if your b is bigger than 1. In other words, the multiplier is a number that is larger than 1. And remember that multiplier is found by doing 1 plus r. The second graph is decay. We use the same exact equation, only this time our multiplier is a fraction or a decimal. That means that your b value is going to end up being between 0 and 1. So in your notes, these graphs are provided. I would just like you to add these extra things in here so that you understand what is actually going to cause your graph to be growth or what is going to cause your graph to be decay. Let's look at some examples. In each of these examples, our rate is going to be given as a percent. And so if we're going to calculate our multiplier, we're going to have to either look at 1 plus r or 1 minus r. So as you read through the problem, you need to determine if you're looking at growth or if you're looking at decay. So as we read this, it says a vlog has been getting more popular through advertising on YouTube. Each month, the vlog has seen a 6% increase in subscribers. So right now, I'd like you to underline the word increase. And then maybe circle the 6%. And let's go ahead right away and calculate the R value. If our percent is given to us as 6%, we need to move that decimal place over two spots. So our R value is going to be 0.06. Because it is increased, we are going to calculate the multiplier by doing 1 plus r. 
So next to the B value, which is the multiplier, we're going to write that out. And then we're literally going to plug the 0 0.06 in place of the R. And then you'll add those together, and you get 1.06. That's our B value. The next sentence says, if the vlog had 6,500 subscribers this month, how many would the vlog have in eight months? So basically this month is our starting point. So our original amount or our starting amount is going to be 6,500. So that will be our A value. And then lastly, the time that we're looking for, we want to know how many subscribers there will be in eight months. So the eight is going to replace the X. What we do next is we take all of these values and we write the equation. So we have Y equals AB to the X. And we're going to have y equals, in place of a, is 6,500. And then your b value, we always want you to put in parentheses. So in this case, we've calculated our b value to be 1.06. And then you put the 8 in as your exponent. What I'd like you to do right now is to pause your video and take out your calculator, and I want you to type this in your calculator. Once you have done that, hopefully you came up with the same answer that we did. It is 10,360 people. Now you may be looking at my answer and then looking at your calculator, and your calculator may have some decimals included with it. You always want to look at the problem and then give your answer in a way that makes sense. And since we're talking about people, you obviously would not want to have a decimal answer. So you just round to the nearest person. Our second example looks at population, and population is a very common quantity that grows exponentially. So let's go ahead and read through it. It says, the population of a small Wisconsin city has been declining. Underline that word, declining. That means we are looking at decay. It gives us the rate of 1.4%. So let's go ahead, let's take a pause here, and let's calculate our R value. We need to move that decimal place over so we are looking at an R value of 0 0.014. When we need to calculate B, because it is declining, we are looking at decay. We are going to do 1 minus R, so 1 minus 0 0.014, which gives us 0.986. So that is our multiplier. If we read the next sentence, it says the population of the city was 23,900 in the year 2010. And then we have two different questions we're going to answer here. So let's focus on part A first. Part A asks us what is the population now? So our starting amount is going to be um, from that year 2010. So we had 23,900 people in 2010. If it's asking what is the population now? Because we are looking at the year 2016, we would just subtract those two values, and we would note that six years have passed, and so our time will be six. Now, just like the last problem, we're going to start with our basic equation, y equals a, b to the x, and we are going to substitute in the different values. So the 23,900 goes in place of a. We always keep the b in parentheses, and it's 0.986, and then to the six. Now, I want to just connect something back to what we talked about at the start of this lesson. You'll notice that your B value is 0.986, which is less than 1. If you look back at those graphs that we talked about, um, the graph that represented exponential decay had a B value between 0 and 1. So you can tell just by looking at your B value and without even seeing the graph if you're looking at growth or decay. So just like the last problem, I'd like you to press pause and then take your calculator and work this value out. And if you've done that, hopefully you came up with a final answer of 22,589 people. Again, you do not want to include a decimal point because we are talking about people. And also note that this number is less than the starting amount, which makes sense because this was a population that was declining. So in Part B, we are using much of the same startup information. We are talking about the same city, the same rate of decline, and the same, same starting value. So we're going to go ahead and fill in our A value as 23,900 and our B value as 
Nothing has changed with the initial setup. The question now is, what will the time be? And it says, what was the population in 2007? Now remember, our starting year was 2010. If we're looking for three years before 2010, we need to subtract, just like we did in the previous example, but we're going to end up with a negative exponent. An easy way to remember that is just if you're going back in time, it makes sense to use a negative. So we're going to do the same thing we've been doing. We're going to plug this into our basic formula. Y equals 23,900 in parentheses 0.986. And then raise that to the negative third power. And you can type this in your calculator just like we have the others. And when you do, you will find out that it was 24,933 people. Now this number is more than the starting amount. But again, that should make sense because we are going three years prior to our starting year. So if the population was in decline, it would make sense that you would have more people prior to that year 2010. So these are a few examples, one with growth, one with decay. You are now ready to start your practice. Make sure that you do all of the problems one through five. And as always, if you have questions, please see your teacher.